Welcome, folks, to It Builds Character number 28, uh, where I build a D&D character every week. Uh, or rather, I build a 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons character every week with uh, the, the build behind it there, um, designed by you guys, basically. You tell me what you want me to build, and I will do my best to do so. Uh, and as you can see right now, we're building the 10th Doctor, so that's David Tennant's Doctor from Doctor Who. Uh, so you can see I build things that are in the realm of difficult uh, for Dungeons & Dragons. Sometimes they're easy, like Captain Jack Sparrow. Sometimes they're difficult, like Iron Man. Um, so it's hard to distinguish uh, some of these. I, I sometimes delve into the world of homebrew but i try not to as i want this to be as attainable for you to create in your own games should you try to use them should you try to play as them or something of that nature so uh basically i'll be building this character using the standard array of stats that's 8 or 15 14 13 12 10 8 is this the uh, ability score numbers uh, I'll be assigning those as I see fit. Again, keep in mind that because it's standard array, one of the stats will be eight, which sometimes doesn't fit with a lot of these characters because they're good at everything or they're not, you know, it just is the nature of how things go. Um, so keep that in mind. And I also build all the characters at level 12 because I feel like that puts you more than halfway through the character's lifespan. And realistically, a lot of the characters that I build should probably be level 20 or beyond but I have to do it this way, as that's just how this works. Um, that's the metric I've chosen to choose for myself, uh, and that's how I build my characters. I use everything that is published as a published source, so that means in a printed book, or anything that has come out in Unearthed Arcana that also is, uh, is legal for me to use in my um, in my the way I build things. Uh, the only thing I do homebrew often is magic items, as more often than not, existing magic items can be repurposed to fit the whatever the characters needs are now sonic screwdriver that's a little bit different so we'll see how that goes when i get there um so i guess again we're going to be building david Tennant's doctor the 10th doctor he's also my personal favorite doctor so that gives me a uh, a pretty good leg up unlike some of the other characters i've built where i've relied heavily on the chat just to help me conceptualize them um Oh, uh, so, yeah, basically, you see, uh, if you guys are asking why you see certain people, uh, in certain places in the chat on the screen, that's because we have people chatting to us from, uh, in this chat app, it's capturing Twitch, YouTube, Periscope, and Mixer. So, we are currently live streaming on all four of those platforms at the same time, so people may be chatting, we can see them all, I can respond to them all. But that's how that works. So if you see somebody and you don't recognize them in the chat, they may be because they're chatting from a different platform. And that's a function of that. So a couple bits of business to get out of the way before we dive into this character. So if you guys are unaware, um, I have a giveaway going on right now for uh, this right here. Four copies, folks. That's four copies of Morgan Kanan's Tome of Foes. This is the brand new book that just came out from Wizards of the Coast. Uh, just came out, really, last Friday. I have three regular edition copies here that you can see. I'm bumping my mic like crazy. Three regular edition copies and one uh, special edition hobby store exclusive cover. I'm giving these four books, see there's four, four books away. Each one also comes with a dice bag containing a set of polyhedral dice. So that is happening right now. I will put the link in the chat for everybody to go ahead and get access to. Um, it is free to enter. All you have to do is do things that most of you are already doing, like follow us on Twitch and subscribe to us on YouTube. If you do those things, um, that's all you need to do to enter to win. So go ahead and do that. And you see me pull it up by accident here on the screen, but... Uh, I'm going to throw this in the chat for everybody to have access to. Um, but yes, that link will allow you to get access to it. You basically just need to do those couple things, but you can do other stuff like referring a friend or retweeting the tweet. Or if you subscribe to us on Twitch, then that's an extra 10 entries. 
Uh, the giveaway runs until the 8th of June at 11.59 p.m. where I will draw winners and try to get them in the mail as soon as possible to get these books out to you. So by all means, tell your friends, um, refer them via your link to get extra entries as well, and hopefully uh, you guys win. I wish you good luck. So there, that's out of the way now. That was my one little plug. And now we'll move into the build. So uh, as per always with you folks here on the internet, I, as I like to say, uh, the reason I have you guys visible on the stream here to see the, the chat is I want you guys to chime in. If you don't think something that I'm doing here fits uh, or is contradictory to the character, uh, please jump in, tell me, and then let's make this character better together. So we're building a Time Lord. So that's a race of people, a race of people that regenerate over time. Uh, that doesn't exist in Dungeons and Dragons, and there is really no close parallel to a Time Lord. They look like humans, so we're probably gonna go with human as our base race, but I'm interested to see what you people think about that. And actually, I'm probably gonna change this to either, uh, I don't know, charlatan, uh, entertainer, I don't know. It's hard. He's, he's the doctor. His background is... 10th Doctor, his background is nine other generations of himself. So, hard to exactly distinguish what his background would be. But, I have two theories on what the 10th Doctor would be. Now, certain... Uh, first of all, people may jump right to Wizard and say he's a Time Lord, he lives in a magic uh, thing... Um, he was a scientist on Gallifrey, um, if you want to go way, way back. Um, and some of his, I mean, he was a government agent. If you look at, I think that's the third doctor was a government agent. He worked for Britain. Um, the ninth doctor was a war so a hero, so or I guess a war hero, if you will, but a soldier and a general. So it's hard to distinguish exactly what you would call him, but... I think the class is probably... the. I think the background is less relevant than the class. Uh, so, in my brain, I want to go straight to Wizard, because I feel like it makes sense, right? Um, so, my brain says Wizard, Time Lord, uh, teleportation, and that kind of stuff. But he's not a wizard. A D&D &D wizard is a book nerd who reads out of a book and casts spells. And the Doctor doesn't really cast any spells ever. He is a he uses a screwdriver and to do it. And some of the Doctors in the previous generations don't even have sonic screwdrivers. Um, so yeah, I my thoughts are I have a couple of thoughts. Uh, I don't like the Artificer in Fifth Edition that they made. It's Unearthed Arcana. It's not great. Everybody knows that it's not great. It's probably one of the closest things you could do, but Unearthed Arcana is either a gun... Uh, Artificer is a gun wielder or a potion maker, both of which the Doctor is not. So I'm leaning one of two ways. I'm leaning Bard, Lore Bard specifically, uh, for a lot of skill proficiencies, um, or uh, Rogue. Because Tenth Doctor is kind of a sneaky dude, um, he's very good at things, so the rogue's reliable talent is he's just, he, he has a large breadth of skills that he is good at, um, and, uh, or I guess he's mediocre or above average at every skill, so I feel like rogues lend themselves best to the, the, the skill monkey role, if you will, of previous editions, um, uh, so, basically, Rogue or Bard is where I land. Um, and I, I don't really know which one I feel more so. So, uh, the problem, I guess the biggest problem with Bard is it has magic. And that's not really a thing that he does either. Um, so, I was thinking maybe Mastermind Bard... It's a very high intelligence bard, one that has access to a lot of high thinking. I feel like that one makes a lot of sense. I do think lore bard fits as well. 
so if you think about Lore Bard, it gets you extra skill proficiencies, right? So that fits into our whole skill proficiency concept. So that's something to think about. Uh, it would also get you Vicious Mockery, or not Vicious Mockery, Cutting Words, where he would use his quick wittiness to force enemies to miss him, basically, by using the Cutting Words feature. Um, if he's going to be built at 12th level... Uh, he'll have extra magical secrets, which just gets him access to extra spells. Um, so, I guess there's the School of Invention Wizard Flower of Life Collective uh, over on YouTube. I forgot about that one, because it was kind of weird. They added that one so late, and it, I feel like it's kind of a, a black sheep, the School of Invention. It didn't seem to really, I don't know, it didn't make a lot of sense to me. It's an option. I'm going to, you know what, let's look it up, because I forgot about it. That it existed so we'll go and look it up but i'm leaning more towards um i'm leaning more towards bard but we'll go and look it up right here oh yeah i forgot about these uh so this is in the unearth arcana three subclasses this gave you the circle of spores druid this was the poison based druid the brute Fighter, which is basically a champion fighter focused on increased damage rather than increased critical. And the School of Invention, which got you Arcana, Arcano Mechanical Armor, which basically just gave you a suit of magic um, studded leather armor. Um, and then you could swap... Oh, that's right. I remember this now. So you had this reckless casting ability where it was basically... The best way I could describe it, it would be the wizard's version of of wild magic sorcerer. So if you think of a wild magic sorcerer, how they have magic, uh, wild magic surge, and it causes random things to happen. This functions very much in a similar fashion, uh, in, in a chaotic way of casting, and that you don't necessarily know what you're going to cast when you cast. Um, and uh, there's the, uh, where's it? There's the reckless casting table here, uh, which lets you do different things, and you can basically upcast and they, it was a pretty cool class in the long run, but uh, I don't think it truly fits the Doctor in that he doesn't really deal with spells. The the kind of wonky, chaotic nature of the way the spellcasting works fits, but I don't think the mechanics of it truly fit. And again, as with any of these builds that I take, take them all with a grain of salt, as we are trying to force a non-cookie-cutter character into the strict functions of... Of Dungeons and Dragons rules. So let's go ahead and check out um, the Mastermind Bard here in Xanathar's Guide to Everything. This is also printed in the Sword Coast Adventures Guide, if you guys are familiar with that. I just happen to have my copy of Xanathar's open because it has everything, uh, well, most of the things reprinted. So let's go jump over there. Mastermind. Now you could also argue Inquisitive, which is your Sherlock Holmesian high of insight um that kind of stuff and i would i would agree with that the only reason i don't want to build an inquisitive rogue is because i literally just did that last week when i made kim possible so let's check out the mastermind uh is, is your focus is on people and on the influence and secrets they have spies score your schemers blah 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 words are your weapons it's often his life and poison um and favors are some of your favorite treasures I mean, I could do Inquisitive if we think that that fits it better, and I'm fine with that. Uh, but so Mastermind is Master of Intrigue, Game Proficiency in Disguise Kit, Forgery Kit, and one set of gaming. You also get additional languages, and you can mimic the speech patterns uh, and accent of a creature you hear and speak with for at least one minute, enable you to pass off as a native speaker of a particular land, provided that you know the language. You could argue that that could be a function of the TARDIS, uh, the fact that you can speak... Um, any language. Master of Tactics, you can use the help action. I'm gonna not put my coffee cup on the books that I'm giving away. Um, addition, uh, use the help action as a bonus action. Additionally, when you use the help action to aid an ally in attacking a creature, the target of that attack can be within 30 feet rather than within 5 feet, right? So that makes sense for the Doctor. Uh, he's good at helping people. And then we have Insightful Manipulator, which isn't really, it's a poorly worded uh, ability, but if you spend at least one mil minute observing or interacting with another creature outside of combat, you can learn certain information about them. The DM tells you if the creature is equal, superior, or inferior in regard 
to two of the following characteristics of your choice. This is in relation to your own intelligence score, wisdom score, charisma score, class levels, if any. At the DM's option, you might also realize you know a piece of the creature's history or one of its personality traits, if it has any. So I feel like that fits. And then, I mean, we're not jumping too far ahead because we're only going to 12, but misdirection is the 13, which is where you can kind of uh, shrug off or sort of convince them to hit somebody else, um, which is very doctor-y type fighting technique is like to get out of the way and not actually get into the fight because he's not really a fighter. Um, unless you count, I guess, the ninth doctor. Who is also one of my favorite doctors. Actually, I think I, he's the only one I have the sonic screwdriver of. But... So we're going to build a rogue. It looks like we're going to build a mastermind rogue for the doctor. Um, so let's think about our stats, right? So we're we're using human, and I'm open to interpretation if any of you guys think there's something better to use than human. But I feel like variant human makes the most sense. Potentially half-elf also as an option if you want to think about going that way. But I'm thinking variant human... Um, and then that way we can get some extra skills. So we're gonna probably put the eight in strength. The uh, the 10th Doctor is not an overtly strong character, uh, physically strong. Um, so now their next stat is gonna be 10. And then we have 12, 13, 14, 15. So he actually, I mean, the Doctor is intelligent. We know that. The Doctor is charismatic, as we clearly are able to see that. The Doctor is wise, because he's old. The Doctor is not as hardy constitutionally, I guess we could say. So well, I think we put the 10 in constitution. I think that that's reasonable. He's also not... I mean, he's a... Hmm, where do we land on this? We could put the 12... Uh, 13... 14, 15. Now, I realize that that doesn't necessarily make a ton of sense, and we may end up shifting those numbers, but, uh, you know, it's hard to, again, he's just, he's hyper-intelligent. Um, he's not, like, overtly dexterous or strong or hardy, and he is charismatic. We've established that much. Uh, we picked variant human, so we could do something like, uh, we said he's going to be a rogue. So we're going to try to get him as many skills as we can get. I feel like that makes a lot of sense here. So what are we going to do here? We're probably going to take... Well, we get... Uh, we'll go down here. We'll put uh, ability score improvements. And then let's see. So he's going to get a plus one to two stats and a feat. We could take the skilled feat and just give him three more skills and really try to just fill out every single one. Uh, we can give him a plus one to charisma to make that a 14. We can give him a plus one to intelligence to make that a 16. And then we can give him the skill. Oh, yeah, let's do that. What the hell? I always wanted to give somebody this, and we'll give him the skilled feat. So let's see what he gets. So he is a rogue. So he's going to get rogue... Uh, skills, which is a list of four. Rogue. So, I think persuasion, sleight of hand, stealth, we give him perception, he gets one for being a human. Human, right? Time Lord. Um, and we'll call that, uh, I don't know, history. You know what? I'm thinking we're just going to give him the sage background, right? I feel like that's kind of fitting. He kind of, for someone who's been around for so long, right? Like you've, you've seen it all because you've been around forever. So I think that that works. So that gives us arcana and history. Arcana. We already took history, so we'll transfer history to investigation. So that should be our four for our background. Um, our human. 
our two background ones. Um, uh, well, Mud Puppy, uh, hello. Um, you said you uh, you picked up Tomofos. Well, listen, if it's you, I'll contact you. Uh, and, and if you do win and you want me to just give it to somebody else, I will choose somebody else. It would be the first time we've done that, so. Um, and then he is skilled, so we're going to give him, th we give him the skilled feet, so he's going to get an extra three feats, or three feats, three skills. So we're going to give him insight, going to give him nature, we're going to give him performance. So that covers that, so that's going to be, what are we saying? Insight. Uh, what did I just give him? Insight. Oh. Nature. Performance. Okay. So he's also going to get Thieves Can't. He's going to get Sneak Attack, but he's probably never going to use it because he's the doctor. Um... 30 foot movement speed. Uh, he's a rogue, so that's dex and intelligence for the abilities there. And then for a rogue, I think the only thing you get is expertise. So. I think we're going to give him expertise, and I think we're going to go perception to your point. Bubbly Fay, uh, perception. What else can we give him? Um. I think investigation. Those are his expertise skills. Um, hmm. Wait a minute, was I just listening to this song? No, never mind. Sorry, guys, got distracted. Sneak attack. All right, investigation. We got thieves can't. All right, then we're gonna get cunning action. We get dash, disengage, hide as a bonus action. Nice, we can put our sneak attack in here, 66. Hello, Mort's Magical Wares over on uh, on Periscope. Again, thank you everybody who's coming from all of the different things. Also, Mud Puppy, I realize that your rank says you're a legend and that you need more hours to become an exclamation point. We're going to revamp the ranking system and revamp a lot of this stuff uh, once I get successfully moved into the new house. That will be new house, new rules. Um, so we're going to work on revamping all of the chat games and adding new stuff and all that. We're going to do all of that. So, next house, which should be, ideally, fingers crossed, June 1st. Um, Alright, so Master of Intrigue. So we can go down here and put Thieves Tools, Disguise Kit, Forgery Kit. Okay, Master of Intrigue. Uh, mimic Speech. Okay. You just can't. Oh, we got, I don't know, what is this? Uh, f two, four. Yeah, so an extra five languages. Um, all right, and then we have Master of Tactics. Um, Master of Tactics. Uh, help. It's a bonus action out to 30 feet. And at four, we're gonna get an uh, ability score improvement. We're gonna throw that in intelligence. That goes to 18. 
Uh, why don't we just do the ability to score improvements while we're here? I'm gonna put his intelligence to 20. That'll be for eight. So we'll go here and we'll say, let's do int, let's do int. That's four and eight, then we get one at 10 and then one at 12. Mm. We'll probably just do wisdom to 16 and dex to 14. We'll just be pretty generic. Uh, plus two is. To dex. Um, so then five is uncanny dodge. Reaction to have damage of a attack. And six is expertise in two more things. So we're gonna give him expertise in hmm. No, oh, Arcana, duh. Things in magic and technology and whatnot. And uh, he's also really good at persuading people. So I'm gonna give him persuasion. Um, then he's gonna get evasion. Uh, half damage on failed deck save. Uh, zero damage on successful save. He's gonna ability score improvement. Then at nine, he's gonna get whatever this class feature was, insightful manipulator. Insightful manipulator. Um, what do we have? Uh, spend one minute observing. DM tells you the target is equal, superior, or inferior to one of the following traits. Int score, wisdom score, charisma score, character. I think that's accurate. Yep, cool. Then at 10, we get another ability score improvement. We'll jump down here. At 11, we're gonna get reliable talent. Uh, treat any roll of a nine or below on a d20 or on a skill check and your proficiency, that's awfully spelled. Uh, proficiency bonus to as 10. Then a 12 is the final ability score improvement. Reliable talent, final ability score, roguish archetype, expertise. Cool, so I did almost all that from memory, which is either impressive or sad. Um, so now we can start filling this out. So this is negative one, Two zero five three two, and this is negative one six zero nine three two. I see why people pick when they do this build, they mix rogue with three levels of lore bard, so that would get you four more skill proficiencies, and then it would also get you jack of all trades so you add at least half of your ability score improvement to or half of your proficiency bonus to all skills and fun fact the way reliable talent is worded you treat any roll of a nine or below to, on any ability check that you add your proficiency bonus to it's been confirmed by the folks at wizards of the coast that if you have 11 levels of rogue and therefore have reliable talent and have two levels of bard and have jack of all trades let lets you add half your proficiency bonus to any ability check you're not proficient with you are now adding some of your proficiency bonus to an ability check therefore a two level bard and 11th level rogue 
can treat cannot roll less than a 10 on any ability check which includes initiative now based on that so that's a pretty crazy thing but yeah had we gotten lore bard we'd have four more skill proficiencies one two three four so he'd have all but missed he'd be missing four total skills which would be pretty pretty bananas um yeah that i see you guys kind of freaking out about that ability score uh reliable talent thing and i like that i really have a desire to build a college of swords bard and a swashbuckler rogue so 11 levels of swashbuckler rogue three levels of college of swords bard so you've got that whole sword thing going um and you're using your synergizing dexterity and charisma i think it could be a pretty fun build it's a very long term build though to pay off on something so simple as that and by the time you're level 13, I don't know how much like that little bit of boost in the skill department is really going to push you over the edge. But uh, it's a build I have cooked up in my brain to try for some time. Um, this is... Oh, wait, this is double. So this is 13. Two. History. No, we didn't pick history. This is just a nine. Insight is a seven. Two. Investigation is a 13. So it's a three. Nature is a nine. Perception is eight. Is 11. Performance is six. Persuasion is 10. This is a five. This is a six. This is also a six. And this is a three. Uh, and then your his passive perception is a 21 which is pretty solid overall his initiative is a two his armor class at the current would be call it 14 we'll call his jacket his trench coat studded leather armor um trench coat His health is going to be, let's see, 5 plus 0, 55 plus 8 is 63. Okay. 12 hit dice. Um, yeah, that's it. So then... So, all right, now comes the moment I'm sure everybody's been waiting for. How the hell do we build a sonic screwdriver? Because it can do anything, which is the sort of the wonkiness about it, right? It could do so many things. It work functions as a million different tools. Uh, maybe that's how it is. Functions as unlimited... Uh, chime of opening. Alright, well, it's an unlimited chime of opening. Since the sonic screwdriver can pretty much open any door. So we're going to give it that. Uh, let's jump over to the magic items here and see what we can come up with. Treasure. Magic items. Uh, yes, you're right. Uh... <laughs> Can do anything except resolve the plot. Correct. It's not a plot screwdriver, just a sonic screwdriver. Um, okay, can't produce stuff. Doesn't protect him against detection, I don't think. Um, doesn't let him transport via planes. Although, we should probably put the TARDIS down there. But uh, the TARDIS is also something that's like... What are you even going to do? Like, you can't say I'm looking at, like, the apparatus of Qualish to, like, uh, say, like, oh, it could it be that's just the TARDIS? But the TARDIS does way better things than the apparatus of Qualish could ever do. Um, yeah, he might have used it as a flashlight once or twice. He's done so many, so many things. And I think in, was it in the Are You My Mummy episode with the ninth Doctor? 
uh, when he first meets um oh geez what the hell is his name captain jack um where is captain jack uh he uh what does he do he says that like oh so that's the ninth doctor and he says something along the lines of um you know when you're trapped alone and you need to put up a bunch of shell a bunch of cabinets and you're trapped alone for a weekend or something you see what you come up with something there's a line something like that uh and i guess that's the the origin of the sonic screwdriver if you will um let's keep going let's see what we can come up with here it's not enough to trap people. It doesn't make him stealthy or fly. Uh, we already did the chime of opening. Yeah, it doesn't let him teleport. doesn't let him fly. It doesn't let him turn into a spider. We could probably say, like, a Darren's Inch... A mobile... Uh, Darren's Instant Fortress that can travel through time would be the TARDIS. Um, I guess. It's a little tricky. Um, can't produce water. It's definitely not a deck of many things. I mean, it's really, it's an artifact, the sonic screwdriver, the way they do shit they do with it. I mean, gem of brightness lets you make light. It also lets you fire a brilliant beam of light and blind people. It doesn't do that. Um, uh, Yeah, the TARDIS has a pool in it. It makes clothes. It makes food. They can travel through space and time. I mean, it also has a personality. Um, if I think that happens at the Eleventh Doctor, uh, where he calls it baby, or no, uh, or something like he meets the like a physical incarnation of the TARDIS at one point. Um, Yeah, um, I have one other thought that we're going to flip to to see if it does that. Yeah, yes, the TARDIS is definitely an intelligent artifact, but I can't... There's definitely, like, that's just flat-out homebrew, right? There's not even... I can't, like, take something and be like, oh, it's this, but with TARDIS flavoring. Like, it is just its own thing. Hmm... Yeah, you're right. I forgot about, uh... Yeah, I guess it's... Actually, you're right, uh, TL. It's more like, uh, Mordenkainen's, uh, Magnificent Mansion. Because it has... It doesn't have servants, per se, but it does make whatever you want whenever you need it to. Um, so that's something to think. Alright, so yeah, it's basically a police box-shaped Mordenkainen's Magical Mansion. Or, uh, Magnificent Mansion, rather. That can also travel through time. Yeah basically. Uh, ignores space and time. Alright, so let's look at the rods, right? Maybe there's a rod that can function similar to the sonic screwdriver, and we can pull from that. Rod, staff, or wand. We'll see. Rod of absorption. Mm. Looks like it can absorb spell energy. It doesn't really do that. Rod of alertness. While holding, you have advantage on perception. Uh, you can use an action to cast one of the following spells. Detect evil and good, detect magic, or see invisibility. Those I'm not... I'm okay with those, if we were to combine that. Protective aura, plant the haft in the ground. No, not so much. Rod of Lordly Might, I thought of, because it can literally do a whole bunch of shit. Makes it a plus three mace, which is not the case, but... One button turns it into a flame tongue. A second one turns it into a battle axe. Another one turns it into um, a spear. Another one turns it into a climbing pole. One another one turns it into a battering ram. And uh, the I guess the last one remains in normal form and indicates magnetic north. And then it can do all these other things. Drain life, terrify, blah, blah, blah. Not so much. Rod of Resurrection, no. Rod of Rulership is a mind control. Rod of Security, teleports you to like a safe place. Staff of Charming, Staff of Fire, Staff of Frost, Staff of Healing, Staff of Power. 
I'm not really seeing anything, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, honestly, I mean, <laughs> functions like a wand of wonder. It just does whatever the fuck it wants when it wants, I guess. Oh, this time it casts darkness. This time it casts lightning bolt. I mean, that's the closest thing, honestly, to the way the sonic screwdriver works, is that it could just do whatever the hell it wants whenever it wants. Again, two points made before, except resolve the plot. Um, but yeah, I guess. Chime of opening... And basically, whatever else is needed at the moment by altering frequencies, choosing different settings, etc. Basically, whatever the DM needs to further things along this is your plot device TARDIS permanent police box shaped Mordenkainen's magnificent that's totally spelled wrong. Magnificent mansion that also can travel through space and time. I don't know, guys. I mean, those two items are so outside of the realm of anything even, like, base possible in Dungeons & Dragons, so... Let's just go up to the top. I think we're done. So, the 10th Doctor is a 12th level rogue. We can see his stats here. 18, 14, 10, 20, 16, 14. Generally well-rounded. His only kind of weak point, if you will, is his physical strength. Which makes sense. You can see that he's proficient in quite a few skills. Each one of these little skills with the pip next to it that he's proficient in means the lowest he can roll on an active check in that is a 10 plus this number. So the lowest his arcana check could ever be is a 23. The lowest his active perception check could ever be is a 21. Things like that. The lowest persuasion is a 10. Everything that's pipped, uh, or he's proficient in rather, um, is minimum roll of a 10. Uh, so if it's 9 or less, he just treats it as a 10. He has sneak attack of 66. We're not going to give him any weapons because he doesn't really use weapons. He has a ton of languages. He has a ton of skill proficiencies, tool proficiencies. He's got expertise in four of those skills. Perception, Investigation, Arcana, Persuasion. He has Cunning Action, Dash, Disengage, or Hide as a bonus action. He can also help as a bonus action and help people that are further away. Um, he can mimic the speech patterns to fit in uh, as though he belongs to a certain area um, by talking to people for a minute. Um, that's true. He did use the sword the first day. Um, and then I guess the rock, when he threw it at the sort of the panel there. Um, he can take half damage from an attack using an uncanny dodge and evasion as well, which explains how someone that's relatively frail can stay alive in all of these extreme circumstances. Um, insightful manipulator, if he spends a minute observing someone, basically he can glean information from them, which we could flavor as doing research, activating the sonic screwdriver, researching in the TARDIS, whatever. Um, oh, that's true, psychic paper. We should put psychic paper. Um, psychic paper. Uh, this um, document changes to be whatever um, identification the wielder requires. Uh, and again, reliable talent we discussed. The sonic screwdriver we know functions like a chime of opening to unlock things. It basically does whatever else you need it to do in the moment. Um, the TARDIS is a permanent police box shaped Mordenkainen's magnificent mansion. They can travel through space and time. And it does have psychic paper. 
uh, the document that changes to whatever identification the wielder requires at a given time. Um, and I think that's pretty much it, guys. That's the Tenth Doctor as best we could do in a nutshell. Uh, so let's, uh, that that's pretty much it. So let's just do a couple of uh, follow-ups here. I'm going to put this in the... I guess this will go more in the Twitch chat than anything else, but... Uh, um, basically, I have this website, which I have to update, this, this Google Doc, which you can see here is... Um, it builds character topics of all the characters that I've built over time and where I'm at. So I built Steve Rogers. I have built Hal from Hal's Moving Castle. I've built Kim Possible. And I have built the Doctor. It's supposed to be angry 10th Doctor, but he's not that different when he's angry. It's more role play, I would argue. But um, I just have to put the links here, but these all exist. Uh, next week, I should be... And also, the dates need to be shifted because there was a while there with work um, where I just couldn't get on to do these. So next week I'm supposed to be building Castiel from Supernatural. Um, so that'll be interesting considering I stopped watching Supernatural halfway through the fifth season. Uh, and they're on like season 14. So that'll be weird. Uh, I'll, I'll definitely be relying on you in the chat for your help. But you can see going forward we're already out into November. We're almost to the end of the year once I shift these dates around. So Hal from Hal's Moving Castle was there. So let's go ahead and grab all of these. And uh, we'll cut these and we'll shift them down here. And actually, we're going to cut these. We'll just do it right. We'll do it live. We'll cut these and then the doctor goes here. Uh, and then this. So here, now we're into the 21st of November. Um, We'll just go we'll just go with work i don't remember the reason why that i couldn't make these but there you go um so that's that uh so basically yeah you'll see we're doing well sandman uh dream from the sandman crowns it's a comic book flapjack from the incredible world of flapjack beowulf from the epic norse uh poem we got some biblical people here we've got red and or ash from the pokemon series doctor strange John Constantine. We got a Digimon in here. We got a character from Bionicle in here. Ben 10. Um, Disney characters. The most viable character option I can do with four separate classes. I did the 20th level character, which was had to have at least one level in every class. Some Final Fantasy characters. Bulk and Skull, the villains from the original Power Rangers series. And then we have a couple of new characters, Hero Academia and Stormlight Archive. This Kaladin one is a new one I just got last week that I added, which is a book I have to go read. Um, and that is where we're at right now. So that is the list of uh, all the characters. If you guys have suggestions, I'll add these to the end. Also, um, if you want to download the sheets for any of the characters that I've built, the sheets are all contained in a folder as well. If you don't want to have the time to go and watch the whole video, which is usually about an hour long, uh, and you want to see how did I build Darth Vader? Well, you can go ahead and take a look at this and see how I did it. Um, and now this is the only one I think I ever built with a homebrew class, was this Darth Vader one. But like, here's how I built Iron Man as an artificer. And here's all the statistics and what the armor does and all that good stuff. So it's all available. All you got to do is go and click and look at it. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Thank you so much for coming out for It Builds Characters. Nice to have some new faces here as well. Again, if you guys haven't entered the giveaway, there is a giveaway, as I stated at the beginning, for four copies of Morden Caden's Tome of Foes, as well as some dice. Um, that goes for another two weeks. And then be on the lookout, because there will be some new, um, some new giveaways and sponsorship deals that I've been in the works with for a little while that will be coming out. So we've got a couple sponsors lined up. Um, some are which are more real life style stuff. Some are for dice. Some are for products and things. So we'll see what we can get. But be on the lookout. We also have the merchandise. I think I the link came up before. But if you want to pick up any uh, nerd immersion things like, you know, I don't know, nerd immersion stickers or notebooks or t-shirts. There are also stuff for the Belladonnas, our Monday night group uh, that plays Rise of Tiamat. There's a Belladonna's set of gear. Um, a new car giveaway, we're not there yet. But, you know, ideally, maybe someday we'll be able to give 
Uh, <laughs> we'll be able to give a car away. I highly doubt that, but that would be awesome. To your point before, Mud Puppy, yes, the gaming table does come apart. The legs are removable. There's a little bracket right here where you can just unscrew the legs. But I'm actually going to toss this guy or donate this guy, one of the two, to anybody who will want it. But uh, I'm going to build a new table for the new house. I have design decisions that I have, uh, things I've realized from, uh, from, you know, from having built this table, having gotten in the process several new tools that allow me to do a lot more things that I was not able to do when I built this one. Uh, and just the, just things that we've gone after playing with this thing for almost a year, or over a year, I guess at this point. We've been playing at this table for over a year. Uh, and there's just little things like, oh, I wish I had done this. I wish that we had tweaked this. Do we really use this? Do we really use that? Stuff that I want to do. Uh, and the new house is going to have a, rather than in an open space like this, all the new, believe, cup holders and bottle openers are a staple for this table. It's just whether, like, do we need all the cubbies? Should I make a station designed for the DM that has, like, a pullout thing for the Dungeon Master for a screen? Should I drop it lower to the ground? Should I make the play service sunken? Should I make it raised up? A lot of stuff like that. You know what? If you follow Nerd Immersion on Pinterest... Uh, there's a there's a Pinterest board on there called Gaming Table 2.0, and you can see all of the things I'm looking at to try to build that. Uh, thank you, uh, Mummy Mumi uh, Kage, there for the follow. Um, so there's there's a lot of thoughts going into that. And the new house is going to have a D and D room, so it won't be like in an open space that used to be a pretty much video game. Um, orient like when I built this place, as you can see here, there are three TVs and an entertainment center that I built full of video games. This was primarily a video game central, uh, you know, man cave, and then it went heavy to tabletop. So rather than having to try to combine the two, there's a separate room that I'm going to paint and decorate in a very D&D &D fashion where the table will be and all the streams will be done and things like that going forward. So don't worry, when we get into the new house, I'll do a very shitty crib style walk around and show you guys what's going on um, and where things are going to go. Uh, so that'll be cool. Uh, can I, you my image? Oh, yeah, sure. Um, you want me to, let's see. Let's go. Um, new scene. Hang on, give me one sec. Uh, there you go. So anyway, to give you that point, since you guys had asked, you can see there are three TVs here, right? And these are all, this is the entertainment center that I built for all the game, video game systems that I had at the time. As you can see, the Wii U came out beforehand, and down here is my Switch that's off camera. So... More systems have come out since then, so I ran out of room for that, right? You know, there's a 3D printer here that wasn't here before. This was never here. There was, you know, rec you can see in the back, there is a, where is it? There's a love seat right here. There was two recliners and another love seat, and those are just pushed off to the side. Uh, and, you know, all of my uh, memorabilia has been slowly been packed up to be moved away. Um, like that was all Ninja Turtles, the whole Ghostbuster alcove around the corner that you can't even see. But uh, yeah, the new place will have D&D &D only, as well as, um, as well as the gaming area as well. So it'll be split in such a way that is beneficial uh, to everybody involved. So yeah, that'll happen in the new house. But like I said, I'll do a cheesy crib style uh, video when we get into the new house. Um, but yeah, current, we got the contract, uh, it's still got to get, you know, over, we got to look through it, and the other folks got to look through it. Um, but uh, if everything goes well, tentative move-in date is July 1st, which would be awesome. So, uh, but let's, let me not just distract here, let me do a service to good friends of mine, if they're still streaming. Let's go ahead and jump over there and see, and then I will possibly throw up a raid slash host. Um for my friends. They are still playing. So if you guys would do me the huge honor, I'm going to throw up a raid uh, for you folks in Twitch here. My good friends 
Brittany, Celeste, Sage, and Nassim, the Venture Maidens, are playing over on their stream as we speak right now. Um, you can watch both Brittany and Celeste in my Monday games alternating. And most of them and myself are going to be at Gen Con, so there'll be a lot of fun stuff there. So we're going to go over and throw a raid to them. So uh, if you guys would sign into that, it'll say like, oh, Nerd Immersion is raiding with a party of whatever. And that would be cool. So anyway, guys, uh, I love you guys. Thank you so much. we got a lot of cool stuff coming down the pipe, so I appreciate it. Uh, and, and like I said, stay tuned. We're doing a lot of new stuff, new top 10 Tuesdays, new articles, trying to get other people to do videos with me. Uh, we're trying to get a lot of stuff going on. So, uh, have a good night, everyone. And I will see you maybe sometime this weekend if I can squeeze something in. So, good night.